Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Dis Distinguished Speaker Series, uh, hosted uh, one member of our group every week, every Tuesday. Those of you that are joining us for the first time, I'm so happy that you are here. If you're joining us live, please click hashtag live. There's a, uh, you know, with StreamYard, there's always a challenge that your name doesn't show up. So please select and opt to get your name displayed there. I would love to see you guys interact. We have an amazing guest today. But before I move forward, just want to let you know that I, my name is Asma Wasti and I'm founder and creator of Accelerate Global, an organization that runs a business accelerator that helps to create stability, certainty, and predictability in your business and in your cash flow. And we teach how to host widely profitable webinars that allow you to enroll your new dream clients in your premium programs on a monthly basis while you're building your audience and your authority online with very easy steps. And even if you're not an influencer or a household name or a follower. So enough about me. We love to have our guests over on our Distinguished Speaker Series where we put them on the pedestal, talk about them, learn from their stories, love to hear their journey, how they became the uh, entrepreneur that they are today. And today we have uh, joining us all the way from India is Ratna Kulkarni. Welcome our Distinguished Speaker Series. Thank you for coming on board here today and speaking to us. Welcome. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Asma. Thank you. Oh, well, I appreciate that. And I can't wait to get um, to hear your story. We have a few people joining us. Hi, L'Oreal. So nice, nice to see you. So glad you could join us. Um, she's joining us from South Africa to hear you. <laughs> So tell me about, so what is it that you do? Just a little bit about your business. Exactly what is, what is it that you do? And then we'll go back and hear your story from the beginning. Uh, okay, all right, all right now. I am a, uh, uh, my latest thing is that I'm a salon. Uh, I'm a coach, basically for salon owners. Yes. Uh, uh, I mean, I am a salon owner myself and yes. I've been in this business for the last eight years and uh, it has been a journey so finally at this point i thought that uh, whatever i have been through uh, a lot of salon owners also would be going through so that i would and i feel i'm equipped enough thanks to asma uh, she has helped me in my journey a lot to become a salon coach uh, i should uh, help my uh, you know the co-owners the other owners salon owners who I'm sure would be going through similar things that I went through. So uh, actually I started my salon. Uh, it was like, uh, what do you say? Uh, it was like an opportunity just handed over to me. Mm -hmm. Law so we're going to partner with him to set up. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to yeah. talk about it. We're going to come to that in a second. But but I'm glad you said sure, that sure, because sure, right sure. now, I mean, this is the time, right, where we have and coming with your experience, I would love people to interact with you here because coming with the business experience that you have, it's really tremendous in compared, comparison to those that are new at this point. I can definitely learn. Yes. I can learn a thing or two from you for sure with that experience. Um, but we're going to talk about it because the people that are going through this hard times these days during the pandemic, there's been lockdowns happening, you know, changes in how economics and the economy of different parts of the world is working. Yes. You know, we're still in a lockdown here in Canada. So that <laughs> can be challenging for businesses like yours, right? The spa and salon owners, right? Yes. Yes, and yes, for you yes. to coach very, very. people, right, how to go through that, that would be something for me to, I mean, I would love to hear that. So oh, where where sure. did you grow up? How did you, you know, did you always wanted to be an entrepreneur from the beginning when you when you were born somewhere in India? <laughs> yeah, I was uh, born, yeah, born in a small village, but uh, my father is a farmer. So I was huh. born on a farm. But uh, then I was lucky enough to get a, a education in a boarding school uh, oh. because my mom, uh, my mom insisted that we'll have our education in English medium. 
so okay. we, I went to a boarding school. So that's where uh, I learned, uh, uh, you know, to be the entrepreneur that I am. The school, as well okay. as uh, my mom. Yeah, my mom. I look up to my mom. She used to manage our farm single-handedly. Wow. Completely. Wow. So, uh, and farm I mean, is a huge business. Running a farm is a absolutely. business on its, like, you know, and then some. So, okay. So, it runs kind of in the blood from your mom. Yes. <laughs> then, then that's what you looked up to. Okay. Did you yeah, want yeah. to go back to your farm after the boarding school or how was your experience there? See, uh, after school, uh, we had to go to a st for further studies college. So, again, I had to stay in the hostel. So I did my graduation from Pune, the place where mm -hmm. I am right now, the same city that I am uh, right here. But you know, those times were different. We had no ambitions or anything of that. The only ambition I had at that point was to get married. <laughs> so I know, now looking back, I find that very funny, but uh, actually it was that. Well, you know, so many other women can relate to you that with, with that, right? It comes sometimes it comes yes. culturally, sometimes it comes personally, right? So yes. that's that's interesting. So and you did you achieve your goal? Were you a goal setter and you always yes, got yes. your goal? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, I just uh, after I finished my graduation. Yes. I'm a science graduate. I've done my uh, BSc honors in botany. Wow. And uh, within a couple of years, I got married. I got married. I just did one year of diploma in business management. Yes. And, uh, yes, I got married. I got married to my boyfriend from college time. Oh, okay. and uh, that's oh, it. That's wonderful. So that was so Something. That's an amazing story because, okay, so coming from a botanist, so botanist, I can <laughs> yes. understand coming from a farm, you would go back and manage the farm. That's Correct. understandable. But coming from being a botanist to a salon owner, that's something, right? So mm, yeah. tell us about your steps through that because I hear that you did, you know, marry to, as you said, to the boyfriend that you got married and fell in love with. And then, you know, there was a the tragedy that happened over time. Yes, yes. Uh, and so I got married in uh, 86, my daughter was born in 87, so I was like all set to have a nice family life. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I just took up a job just for the heck of it, because once my star daughter started going to school, the full time mm -hmm. school, there was nothing for me to do. So, so what was the job you took up? You got to talk about that too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so actually, the main reason I took up that job was because uh, that uh, that place was next to my house. It was just five okay. minutes walking distance. Uh -huh. So you know, at those times, saving time on traveling, uh, there was just yeah. uh, actually again, I would say no ambition, just a job, just a job. So I took up a job in a two wheeler showroom, and we were we would do the finance part. The selling would be done by another team and i was right. in charge of the finance so we had okay. this in-house finance company so we had to process all the papers for them you know take signatures i don't know if you have ever taken a loan so many paper signatures you have to yes do. Yes. yes we yes. have to do that as entrepreneurs in our business all the time also yes. and yes. i'm sure a lot of people can really so it was a car showroom that you went into yes. and you're yes. Yes. you know <laughs> Hi, Monica. Monica's joined us as well. So you guys, um, so you went in for that just to support your family because your, you know, little one was going yes. to school, but it was right. not an ambition for you in terms of entrepreneurship. You didn't think no. of it. But do you think all these jobs that you took up and all this process of going through was setting you up to be the entrepreneur you are? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, it did uh, do that because then uh, after a couple of years, I was made in charge of the whole showroom. So mm -hmm. I was, uh, I mean, I took charge from my boss. Mm -hmm. I was running the place. And of course, then I went on to first it was two wheelers, these scooters and motorcycles. And then the cars came in. So I took over that car section also completely. Wow. Yeah, wow. so manage absolutely talk about managing, you know, a boss boss woman, right? <laughs> Working there. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, so and you worked uh, there for how long? I was there for 10 years wow. with with my years. boss. But my boss, uh just tell my boss also was a, a share broker, a share mm -hmm. trader. 
okay uh-huh. he had he had this dealership he had the car dealership as well as he was a trader so i got interested in that business also wow uh, and i started i kind of started studying on my own what are shares and how to invest so that kind of caught my fancy and uh, in 2003 a tragedy struck mm-hmm. i lost my husband in a car accident mm-hmm. and uh, Uh, well, then those times were uh, pretty difficult in the sense. I, my house was under construction at that point in st- time, and we right. were staying in a rental place. We were wow. staying so for for us Indians to stay in rental place is very very difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the biggest aim, biggest aim of any Indian is to own a house. Right. You know, the ultimate goal. So it was really traumatic. I had a, my father-in-law whom I had to look after. And so, you had a little one. You had your daughter, uh, yeah. right? My daughter your... was just sixteen. My daughter was just sixteen then. She had wow. just finished her tenth standard, tenth grade, and going to college. She started going to college. Yeah. So, so you came at a okay. life point where you you had to decide what to do. Is that right? Is that what the decision making yes. factor was? Yes. Not not what to do, how mm-hmm. to do it, mm-hmm. how to do it mm-hmm. is what I had to decide. I would I uh, would I just sit at home and you know cry and not do anything about it or just stay continue what I was doing continue the live the life that I was living so that's what mm-hmm. I decided that I would continue the life I was living so I continued with my- Okay I hope we didn't lose you Ratna Hopefully it's continuing the same way. I think there's a little bit of a break in here. Right, Monica says yeah. it looks like the Sorry. Indians and Italians yeah. are the so same about called... owning a house. <laughs> Hello. Uh, right now, people relate to you. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. I think we're good. Asma. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I just awesome. Lost. So Monica is yeah. saying it looks like Indians and Italians are the same way about owning a house. <laughs> yes, 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 surely. <laughs> right? The ambition yeah, right, is the same. Right. Like you got to have your own house, and that's oh. also an ambition. Like having goals is a big deal, right? It's supposed to be because isn't that the driving factor? You know, the, the fire within yes. us. Yes. So, so knowingly or unknowingly, I had set goals for myself. Right. I mean, I hadn't studied anything or read anything, but I had set goals for myself. Like I said, yeah, after ten years, I must have a diamond. You know, Mangal Sutra, that chain yeah. that we wear, the Indians right. wear. Right, right. You know, the black I, beads. I want, right? yeah. yeah. So I wanted that with diamond, uh, with a diamond uh, locket. Okay. The pendant should be of diamond, and I should okay. have a car. So, you know, those. That's the kind of goals I had set for myself. Right, and, and think, those are and, not necessary, and that's amazing that you should have one. One should have those goals, and I don't know if anybody kind of looks down upon them, but those are the measure of your achievement. Because unless you have a yes. goal, and and of course the other goals come with it in your business, right? We're going to talk about yeah, it in a yeah, minute yeah, or so. Yeah. But those goals actually keep us going. Okay, if I need this, what is it that I need to do in order to achieve it, right? And you continue to set those goals even after you lost your husband. Is that that's what you were telling us, right? Okay, I hope we haven't lost Ratna. I can hear her. Yeah, Ratna. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Keep talking. We can hear you. Looks like my connection is. That's okay. Keep talking. We're 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 still getting you through. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and those those goals. That that said, knowingly, unknowingly, I set those goals for myself, and uh, that's what led me, you know, finally to achieve what I wanted to uh, kind of achieve. So after my uh, husband's death, uh, then I uh, moved on uh, to my boss's uh, share broking office, mm-hmm. where I learned about mutual funds. Mm-hmm. and then i uh, in 2006 i became an independent mutual fund distributor that is my first independent job that i started as an wow. advisor 
Wow, that yeah. is amazing, Ratna. That's some achievement for you to go through that and yeah. go through a tragedy and complete that and start your own broker, like you know, your your agency yeah. or as a, as a licensed yes. agent. Agency, yes, right. Yes, yes. For you to do so that. Oh, uh, things. Yes, absolutely. It was uh, things were going well enough, and then, uh, like I said, my brother-in-law then approached me. Mm -hmm. uh, if I would like to partner with him for to set up the spa and the salon, he had he was taking up the franchisee for two uh, uh, from two companies, okay. from a salon company and a spa company. So I just okay. let me explain to you what my setup is. So right. I have a salon and a spa in the same place. So in mm -hmm. my spa, we have seven rooms, mm -hmm. total seven rooms. And uh, in terms of therapists, we have five therapists, male therapists, mm -hmm. and five mm -hmm. female therapists. So this is one setup. And the other setup is for the salon, where we have five stylists with three and three beauticians. And all this is managed by a front office, where we have wow. a center manager with uh, the sales executives. So that was the setup. Mm -hmm. And uh, That's a big I mean, setup. Uh, believe That's a big me, setup I had, right now. Ten, uh, ten, ten, like, number yes. of people to manage and run the size of the salon itself and the spa that's huge and you say you took it as a child and you said okay let me join hands with you let's take it yeah yes <laughs> yes i mean uh, i i just took it maybe that's the way i am and I, I of course i had the backing of the company the companies were there so i trusted the because companies it was a to franchise guide me. Yeah. it was a franchise at yeah, that time it was a franchise right. yes Wow, time, Monica right, says right, it's right, impressive. Right. It is impressive. That's why I wanted more people to come and listen to your story. <laughs> it's remarkable, I tell you. So it was a franchise. You took it on. You joined hands with your brother-in-law and you started it. Even with all the challenges you have, I don't know what's in it in, in you. And I would like to know what keeps you going because I always like to ask all of my members who are there yeah. as distinguished speaker because everybody's motivation is different, but they... There's an innate thing that keeps them going and taking on these challenges the way you do. Yeah. Is that a personality? Uh, is that what is it? Uh, I, I think for me it's a personality. Mm -hmm. uh, never give up. And uh, see, I was I educated in a boys' school. Uh, I mean, <laughs> okay. girl, a co-ed school, girls and co boys together. Okay. And, uh, Co-ed, co uh, uh, school, yeah. and uh, there I always had the feelings: if the boys can do it, I can do it better. All right. You know? So you wanted that to let me show the, you I attitude. Want... Yes, the let me show you <laughs> attitude, right? Every time if somebody says, yeah. "Well, you can't do this. You're not good enough. You're not, you know, whatever, strong enough. Have whatever have you?" And you go, you go out. Let me show you how how it's done. That's the kind of personality yeah. you're yeah. talking yeah. about. And, and, uh, and you know, in school, I was a little naughty, you know, <laughs> boisterous, you know, naughty and boisterous. Okay. So, uh, I used to be punished a lot. I used to be punished a lot. Me too. But that led to a thing of, you know, the, the feeling of being not good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I uh, continued with the feeling of not being good enough. So mm -hmm. until I started my own business and started earning my own money, I mm -hmm. didn't know. I had very low self-esteem, mm -hmm. very low self-esteem. Until I mean, I was amazed that I could do so much. Right. And then people because you were constantly when, were you is that was that because you were always trying to prove people wrong? Was that the thing that was going on? No, it was just lo low self-esteem. That's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just didn't believe that I could do it. Wow. I just didn't. I didn't believe that. After and all even that. now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's normal. <laughs> that's, yeah, that happens. Even now, like, you know, I'm sure Monica and L'Oreal and all these people that are joining us will tell you, I feel it almost every, not every day, but once in a while, you get that feeling that I'm maybe not good enough. Maybe I'm not doing enough, right? That's the imposter syndrome that yeah. we sometimes yeah. get. Yeah. Yes. It's yes, the belief yes, in yes. itself. And, yes. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So maybe that was one of the things 
and never okay. give up uh, uh, take the challenge and just okay so learn, you took on learn. that challenge with your yeah. yeah so you kept on learning and you kept on, so you went on to yeah. take on that franchise for salon and spa and then what happened yeah so uh, the first couple of years were good that there was a complete support from the com uh, from the companies the parent right. companies gave us a good. but one fine day in uh, march 2017 uh, the salon company closed down and that's yeah. the, the time franchiser it really closed hit down. yeah wow yeah, the parent company okay. closed down okay and uh, that's the time it uh, really hit me cuz i said now i have to do business this time i was just till now i was just following i was just yeah. following their lead you know yeah. i did not apply my mind at all right. at all for that matter right i said uh, what whatever they told me i used to do that because if they had their set and systems their operations whatever and you absolutely. have to follow okay yes. yeah yeah that's what and i i really i mean i am that kind of person if there is somebody who knows better okay i i will follow you then i do not uh, uh, be, you know uh, uh, create uh, confusion by applying my own mind mm -hmm. so that's a system and but they it closed down so mm -hmm. i didn't know what to do and mm -hmm. we were not doing so well and then mm -hmm. it, you know it's a vicious circle mm -hmm. once the client stop coming your revenue stops and you stop marketing mm -hmm. so slowly and fortunately or unfortunately uh, that i decided to visit my sister stays in canada so i decided to visit my sister in 2007 in uh, september 2017 awesome and <laughs> <laughs> i was there for 6 weeks i was there with her for 6 weeks in canada and right. you know i had a wonderful time it's a beautiful country i really fell in love with the country it and, is uh, yes yeah did you want and, to go back but, then because you had a salon so you had to unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> i had to come back there yeah. was no way uh, i could have stayed so i had to come yeah. back i uh, came back and in december just one fine day all my front office staff walks off or before that my stylist and beautician that already left wow because behind your back manager, because you weren't there yeah yeah right. because i wasn't there and my manager could not manage it wow so i we were at zero total especially in the salon we were zero no staff no front office staff I was there working there. We used to open at six a.m. in the morning till nine. That used to be our timings. And that was just you on the on the especially on the salon side. Yeah. Yes. Versus the, uh, the salon. Wow. And of course, even even the front office. I was the only one. Then Did I called in my. Did you think of closing down? Did you ever think of okay, uh, no, you know, it's not no. working. I need to shut down. I need to walk away. No, no. Did you ever think that no. way? No, 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 not at all. Not a, not even a single point. that i will close it no i uh, every time it was a challenge for me how oh. every time i said okay uh, like you know like we say this too shall pass yes yes that's right that's what this too shall pass this too, if you have your goal that is your goal of keeping your salon and spa and running it then nothing can phase it out so you took it as another yeah. challenge with no staff yes. no stuff i call then i call back all my stylists they came back they had left because i was under around you yeah. know basically it was that so it took some a couple of months for them to come back and so to get the whole thing in place but uh, we came back with a bang my focus yes. was completely 100% on the marketing and getting mm. the systems in place so yeah. from 1st april uh 2018 to 31st december 2018 in 9 months we did one crore uh, uh, how many in i don't know in terms of dollars how much is that i believe it's uh, 10 million close to 10 million uh, yes close to <laughs> 10 million yes, dollar yes. business <laughs> i got to give you a, a, like folks who are joining us give give ratna a round of applause for that for being an entrepreneur extraordinary that's why i wrote for you that you're an entrepreneur extraordinary from going from zero staff to zero business to zero clients to going to doing 10 million in a year that is remarkable that is remarkable nine, like nine nine months nine months nine months in under a year that's that's in under, so under a year wow
And then yeah. how did you get on to become a salon coach then? So now you're running this oh. hugely successful business. What made you, you yeah. know? <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, just during all that time, my brother-in-law, he's a senior person and right. he did not, he was not keeping well. So he kept telling me, Ratna, let's sell it off. Let's sell it off. So for me, I could never do it. It was, it was my baby, you know, right. uh, the salon, the spa, because uh, whatever was uh, put all the tiles, everything, I had gone and purchased it. I had gone and marketed for, I mean, you know, looked around for right. it. Each right. and every play, uh, thing of that uh, uh, spa and salon, you know, your blood and sweat was in it. Yeah, absolutely. And I used to spend nine hours per day over there. Amazing. So I said, and beauty business, beauty business is just there to stay, and there is no point in closing. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. the only problem is I was we were not able to manage it properly. Mm -hmm. That was the only point. Mm -hmm. So I said, so then I just. Uh, thought uh, he, he, I said, I will buy it from you, and that's the point. I bought it from him. Then. You bought your partner bought out. out the whole, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is Completely. amazing. That is amazing. You bought your partner out, your business partner out of the business, and you took the complete ownership 100% yes. at that point in time. You said, 100%. It's my baby, I'm gonna take it. If your heart is not in it, you take your route, yeah. and I'll take it on. Wow. Wow, yes, Ratna. Yes. Uh, and you know, I'm learning so much from you now. It's amazing. And I'm sure our, our viewers and our members are too. So amazing. Okay. So now yeah. here's the, you know, you have this going, and then you say what? I need to give more. <laughs> no. So then uh of course then uh, we were uh, I mean it was the original name was yet there. So mm -hmm. then I decided to change the name. You know, mm -hmm. give up that old name, and uh, so that com it would completely be mine. There right. would be nobody to. Uh, uh, so you rebranded it. You rebranded it. You completely Absolutely. did. Okay. Okay. Completely. Look at the self awareness and the wherewithal. I've got to point this out, Ratna, because not all entrepreneurs are like that. Because sometimes when our businesses are not doing well, and I have been through a few businesses myself, when it's not doing well, we sometimes point it out to the market. Sometimes you point it out to our business partners that are there. Sometimes we blame someone. You know, we, we don't have the awareness of where the challenge is and how to fix it. Yeah. Right? But you did. Yeah. You you didn't give up that way and you, st you didn't start blaming others, did you? Right? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. I, uh, I would like to mention one more thing in this. Is that when uh, in December when we were at zero, my manager and my stylist, he was a very good stylist, both Ooh. of them started a salon next door. <laughs> oh my goodness, talk about a company. They, and they took away all my clients. Wow. Wow. Talk about a challenge, Ratna. I mean, you just said, so, kept on saying, bring it on. <laughs> okay, so they, your employees went and started a comp competitive business right next door to you. Next door, next door to me. Wow. Next door. But I did, I said, I did not focus on them. What mm -hmm. I, fo my focus was on my business, how I would get my staff back and how would I get my clients back? Right. I did not worry that they had taken it. I knew, right. I, I knew what I was and how I could get my clients back. I had that confidence. Very good. I had that confidence. So you I have developed a product, the kind of a product that people will come to, kind of a yes. service yes. that people will come service, to. Service, 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 uh, value, yes. value added service I had developed. So I knew wow. my client was, it, it was a temporary phase they had gone. It was a temporary mm -hmm. phase. They all came back to me. Mm -hmm. They all, all of them called up and said, this boy is calling us up, we are, but we will not go there. We will come to you. Wow, that's that's called customer service. Yeah. We have someone yeah. else. I'm going to get her to talk about that. But that's amazing. That's what customer service is. That's why we have the customer service as a cornerstone <laughs> of our organization, too. You know yeah. that, Ratna. So, yes, so, of, course, then, of course. So how yeah. did you become this from salon owner to a salon coach? So then, almost uh, to the, the end. whole, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. The, uh, uh, okay, so it was a journey. Like uh, mm -hmm. there was a lot of realization through this period. I understood what is a uh, what is what my financials, what they were, what is profit, what mm -hmm. are the what is the importance having systems in place, what mm -hmm. is the importance of marketing, 
Mm-hmm. What is the importance of marketing for a salon or a mm-hmm. spa? Because most of them don't. They think of it as an expense. Whereas marketing mm. is an investment in your business. This is what most of them don't realize. I had made that mistake myself, mm-hmm. and I I paid for it. So mm-hmm. uh, that's where I thought. And then I was lucky enough to meet you. And, yes, thank uh, you. Know, thank you for coming to our organization. Yeah, you want to talk about that? Yes. So uh, I was I was very uh, again uh, low self esteem. I didn't know that I was good enough. But thanks to Asma, she really made me realize how good I was. And you are. She, she, you I are. mean, coaching me is a whole this. thing. <laughs> <laughs> that i had something i had something to tell people you know that's what uh, the realization i got yes i have my story to tell i have my learning and i i have the capability uh, that is what you know you instilled that confidence in me that mm-hmm. i had the capability of coaching yes and you do oh. you see here you're talking yeah. so well right <laughs> you still can and and i want to talk about this because sometimes we feel that that you know during difficult times like during the pandemic you still did your business did 5 million dollars in revenue yes even absolutely then, yes, even, even then, then you didn't you didn't give up and you didn't and no, you had no. so you you took your ability you took your expertise and you converted it into a business and a service and monetized it by giving that value to other people who are looking to start their salons yes, or yes, they already yes. have them but they're not right is that what you're coaching yes yeah so that's coaching main thing is that uh, uh, see the most important thing we salon owners have is data mm-hmm. of customers that is servicing mm-hmm. so that is the it's a gold mine that we have and we don't look at it Mm-hmm. we don't look at it we are all the time looking for new customers no right that's not the way so that is what i teach them and of course there is a lot of other things like uh, that is one is systems like you must know how many hair cuts you have done in a month mm-hmm. how many hair colors you have done in a month and one month you have done so much one so much why is the difference that is what yeah. you need to study Yes. That is what you yes. then of course that's what the, you coach. That's what you yes, coach on how to go about it yes. so that you stay yeah. consistent and profitable. And that's what yeah. uh, webinar accelerator does, right? That's what our company yeah, does. <laughs> we teach you, we coach you on how to be consistent in your income as a coach and how to yes. digitize it, right? Monetize your expertise in doing yes. that. Yes. And yes. exactly yes. the same thing, processes in place, operations in place, so you don't have to struggle with that. You focus on your product. You focus, focus yeah, on your absolutely. service, absolutely. right? Developing yes. that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and now you are a, a salon owner and a coach, and you're looking yes. to expand your business beyond borders, beyond India, yes. beyond Pune, where you are, yes. all around the world. <laughs> yeah, all around the world. Yes, yes. You're ready and to take also on the world. Within, within India also, I would be, uh, you know, giving out franchises, hopefully yes. once this whole the, the that was the next step after i was doing so well the next step mm-hmm. was to give out franchises the thought of this salon uh, coach came in later all right so you want to franchise to... this this your business on to others instead of taking it yes, on yes yes um, yeah that's yeah. amazing yeah. guys i mean those who are you know uh, are watching what do you think you put your comments in there and if you're watching us in replay hashtag replay do hashtag replay that's amazing monica says keep expanding ratna you and you have it in you keep expanding i know that you will you will do <laughs> thank wonders you, thank you already you. have done so much um and then you know with this and this pandemic has given a lot of reflection and thinking to almost everybody right around yeah, us yeah. and those who are looking to start uh, i mean they can you show them how to start in their spa their salon yes, business no matter yes. where they are in the world right and you have a lot of tips and tricks of, on up your oh. sleeve right so that you can teach i know that because i'm working with you closely in, in terms of that yes um i don't know who this facebook user is because i don't see their name but they're saying so inspiring you are i i i, I cannot Thanks. emphasize enough this is one of the most inspiring stories that i've gone through uh but so much i i appreciate it and there's so much to learn from you and i'm sure we'll we'll keep hearing from you in the group on sure, our LinkedIn, sure. you know all that but you have inspired a lot of our members here 
just by talking about your story, your challenges, what you went through in ups and downs personally, losing your husband, as well as through your business, right? Yes. And yet you yes. never gave up and you kept on doing it because it's your passion that you continue to add. So I really yes. appreciate yes. that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, with all of us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aspa, for uh, call, uh, inviting me here. And, give, yeah, and, and, and uh, I'm, I'm loving working with you. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You so much. I'm so happy that you're a part of our webinar accelerator. This is exactly what we do. And we encourage and we motivate all at the same time, right? With with everything else that comes with it. That's the mindset piece that comes with it. I'm a very strong believer yeah. in that, that, that it's so important for all of us, especially during these times, right? Oh, where, where sometimes it can be unhealthy for us to be isolated yes. and alone. That And we start it comes me too you know i i got to talk to my coach right <laughs> keep my mindset yeah, going yeah. so uh, one, just one point uh even during the pandemic then i thought uh, i didn't have any beauty certification so now i took up uh i'm, I'm doing my sedesco uh, beauty certification that is for wow. skin and uh, you know yeah so that's so a nice you're just adding month. more, upskilling yourself yeah. constantly. That's yes. what that's yes. a true entrepreneur. That's a true entrepreneur indication that if you continue to upskill yourself, because we we continue to believe that we can do better, that's that's what a heart of an entrepreneur is con consistently. So you are an entrepreneur, Ratna, no doubt <laughs> yeah. about it. All right. Thank you, yeah. guys. Thank okay. you, Monica, L'Oreal, everyone else that joined us today so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate your feedback. You've got lots of hearts going on there, uh, Ratna, for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll check it so, out. I'll check it keep, out soon. Keep, keep going on. All right. Thank you, guys. Sure. Have a good Thank day. you. See you again next Bye. week. Bye. Bye now. Yeah, see you. Bye. Bye.